So here we really are at, um, again, kind of the appraisal, but also starting to apply the evidence, right? So thinking about actually making our clinical decision, our, our step four in our process. So when you take that information that you've appraised, again, some thoughts to kind of keep in mind. So are the patients similar to those in your study, both on age range, comorbidities? So, you know, if you're doing a study on tissue healing, did you take into account um, diabetes or things like that? And is that similar to your patient? Um, so what else did your patient have going on? Um, you know, maybe they had an ankle sprain, but they were also in the middle of finals. So there's mental stress that they're involved in. Again, what does that change based on the evidence? How do you use your expertise and your knowledge of your patient and your knowledge of the condition and knowledge of, of the interventions to make your decision? Um, compliance. So if they had this great study where they got ultrasound three times a day for 12 days and they saw these results, is your patient going to do that? Something to keep in mind. So you can usually see things in the inclusion criteria and try to match them to your patient. And then how much of the study effect can you expect from your patients? And one way to do that is what's known as estimating the patient's risk compared to a control group or um, the peer. And so it es estimates the patient's risk of an event, so the event rate with the treatment, without the treatment, and, and what would potentially happen. So again, that's a little more complex. Ideally, um, that takes into account um, more information than you're probably going to deal with, but it's something that you might see out there. Is the intervention realistic in your setting? So we mentioned this a little bit too, like, is it even available to you? Can you get your patient someplace that would have that treatment? Um, based on your patient, is it something that they respect? Um, it helps to present treatment options. So you might have, hey, the evidence says this works, and you want to share that with the individual. But again, if it says injections and that person is not someone who um, feels comfortable with medications, then it doesn't really matter what it says. And you need to go back to the drawing board. So ideally, you're presenting these treatment options um, to your patient. Does the comparison intervention reflect your current practice? That's also an interesting question. So if in the study, what you were comparing is what you would typically do, and this is something different, well, did the study also look at that and look at that difference? Um, what alternatives are available? So we're going to learn as we look at indications and contraindications that more than one modality could potentially work in different situations. So what other alternatives might be available? And can we present those to the patient? And do we know the evidence on those? Um, are there adverse effects for this treatment compared to others? That might be a reason we don't do something, even if it's showing really effective. Can we do nothing? It's a horrible question. No athletic trainer wants to think about that. If we do nothing, does this patient still get better? And the answer is probably yes. Does it happen at the same speed that we would want it? Does it happen at the same effectiveness level that we want it? Does it get them back to full activity versus just activities of daily living? Maybe not. But is doing nothing an option? Is the patient already doing something else too? We talked a little bit about this in cultural competency stuff, right? Like if you have a patient who believes in a certain approach, are they going to do that in conjunction to this no matter what the evidence says? Are the outcomes appropriate to your patient? Again, are they willing to do it? Do you know the contraindications of your patient? Again, if it's saying ultrasound is the best um, mechanism for treatment of this, but your patient has a condition that doesn't let them use ultrasound, what does that mean? And then, does it match the goals of your patient? One thing to note is that application of a modality, especially, often comes before evidence. You're going to discover this because you're going to go in and do your research on your modality and be like, they've never even looked at it for this condition. How can we be using it? Because theory comes, comes, then practice follows, and then usually evidence follows. Why would they study something that isn't being used? And so that's usually the process. So. It's still used, especially if individuals are getting good results and if the theory is sound, okay? And then they study it 
and study why that's potentially working and make sure that there aren't other contraindications that we might not be aware of yet. So being a critical thinker is really important. You have to be able to weigh and consider. Don't just take reading the abstract and saying, well, they found ultrasound increased range of motion. Because you don't know if that's good evidence or not. And you don't know if it's related to your patient or not. You have to actually read into the articles. Don't ever reject or accept something strictly on a single article or on even all the evidence you find. Put it all in perspective, think about your patient, and move from there.